You know, it's a great day when you can celebrate the greatest event that has ever taken place. Could you imagine in your mind when sin entered into this world, the heartbreak of God, of all humanity, that sin entered this world, the curse upon this world was established, and in God's infinite mind, he said there had to be a plan. There had to be a plan to redeem mankind from their sin. The triune Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, came together and united, and God said this, Son, you, you are the redemptive plan. You are going to go to this earth. You are going to be born as a baby. You're going to live the 33 years and you are going to die a cruel death because of sin. Well, the plan was enacted. And in all of heaven, they were talking. The angels were proclaiming what was going to take place. Why in the world would God choose to communicate to the world the birth of a baby, the Son of God, to angels, to a shepherd boy, to a bunch of no-name people laying on the hill watching sheep. They make zero amount of money. They have no influence in the world. They're worthless in the eyes of mankind. They're just shepherds. Why would God choose to communicate to the world the redemptive start to a bunch of shepherds? When you think about it, it doesn't make sense. Why not tell it to the kings, to the nobles, to the priests? Why? To shepherds. Why to people that just are common individuals? Why not to a higher authority or a higher power? When you start thinking of the common man, the you and the I, start thinking about the people that really have no Ability to be movers and shakers. That's exactly who Jesus came for. See, the manger represents the poor. The shepherds represent the average. The wise men represent the powerful and the rich. See, Jesus came for all mankind. He came for every person for every lost soul, for every sin that was committed, Jesus came to be born to die for you and for I. So when that takes place, what can we learn from the shepherds? I believe there's things that God has put in place for us to learn. And the first thing, as the shepherds were, I think they have to be attentive. See, the shepherds, Every day, a 24-7 plan that they were watching their sheep by night. They didn't make a lot of money. In most cases, they were hirelings. They didn't own the sheep. They were watching the sheep. So they made probably minimum wage of the day. They stayed out on the fields sleeping. They probably were not very pleasant to be around. Some of the cultures of the day say that the shepherds of the day were not like the shepherds of David's day. The shepherds of David's day, it was an honored position. But it has downgraded to a point that the shepherds of this day were hirelings. They were just there to make money and to watch their sheep. They would not die for the sheep, but they would watch the sheep. But they were very attentive to the needs. So, attentive. That that was a first object of God to say, I need men and women that will be attentive to the needs of my work. In Luke chapter 2 verse 8 it says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock by night. Living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Think about what they were doing. They stayed focused on what God had in store for them. They knew that what they were about ready to do was going to change the world. The second thing, they were awed. 
They were in awe of what God did. In Luke 2, 9 it says, And the angel Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were terrified, fearful. Could you imagine? The greatest event that has ever taken place is taking place right over the hill. And the angel of the Lord, the Shekinah glory of God, came down right inside of them. For the very first time in their life, they experienced something that they would never forget. They were impacted by the angel of the Lord. And the angels, a choir, came up and started praising God and saying, this is what's taking place. The Savior, the Messiah, is alive. The process of redeeming your sins is in place. They were in awe. God started the plan. They could not redeem their own sins, but Jesus, the Lord and Savior, is born. It wasn't just a baby. It was God. And so often we, we hear the Christmas story, we read the story, and some people think it's a fairy tale. Some people don't take it serious. But the greatest event, the cross, could not have taken place if it wasn't for the birth. The birth of our Lord allowed the redemptive plan of God to take place. We should be in awe that we have the ability to accept his forgiveness. And the angel, when they proclaimed that message, the shepherds were in awe. And then they accepted, they accepted what the calling was. In Luke chapter 2 it says, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you great news to all people. I want to give you that great news. It's acceptance. It's acceptance of what they need to do. What they should do. The message for all the people. We have to proclaim that message. When we hear the message of Christ being born, we hear the message of Christ Dying for our sins. The angels proclaimed the message to the angels and it said it's for all people. It's not just for you. It's not just for America. It's for every country, every tongue, and every land. How does every country, every tongue, and every land hear about Jesus Christ? Just as the shepherds did. They had to accept that calling. They had to see for themselves they had to acknowledge what was taking place and they had to proclaim it. So that's the fourth. They acted. They acted. In Luke for, uh, chapter 2, verse 16, it says, So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. They hurried off. I like when it says they acted because the word hurried, in haste. They, didn't, they, 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 they left everything behind. They didn't care what was going to take place because the event that was going to change their life was in place. And they said, nothing will stop me from seeing, from experiencing what God is doing. And the Lord told them, this is what's happening. The angels are praising God. It's an event. A birth. And here we are 2,000 years later. What do we do? We must act as the shepherds acted. We must take the event of the birth of our Lord. It's not just a baby. It's not just a, a, a story that we tell to the kids. It's not just presents that we open because of Jesus' birthday. It can't be a 25-day event for December. Christmas has to be a life change. Because if it wasn't for the Christmas, we would never have the cross. And if it wasn't for the cross, we'd never have heaven. They all go hand in hand. And the baby that was born in the manger is the same man that died on that cross. The shepherds heard. The shepherds acted. And the shepherds proclaimed. They went and saw. When they acted, they got up hurriedly, and they went to the manger. Check out the irony. I read this this week. Check out this irony. 
unclean shepherds came to a smelly stable to see the Holy of Holies lying in a bed of hay. Many commentators put it the possibility that they were taking care of the sheep that were going to be sacrificed in Jerusalem's temple. If that were the case, it's no accident that they leave their sheep behind to visit the Lamb of God. A millennium earlier, David kept watch over the father's sheep in the same pasture, and now they have seen the son of David born in the city of David. The Savior is the Lamb of God that's going to take away the sins of the world. 33 years after his birth, that was proclaimed. Here's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of this world. They acted. They came and saw, and then they left and shared. Once we experience, as the shepherds experience, the birth, the sacrifice, God, and we see that it's real, we see that God's faith is genuine within our life. We act upon it. We see it. But then we're called to do something about it. The shepherds were told that this is for all people. It's not just for you. The Savior that is being born in Bethlehem is for all people to see. So when they saw it, they got up and they shared. They shared what was taking place. Verse 17 when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what he had done and told him by this child. They went up and they shared. They graciously told everybody that they saw what was taking place. They left and they shared. The spirit of Christmas cannot be left in the church house. It cannot be left in our living rooms. It has to be proclaimed that this is the message that Jesus has for us to share to this world that Jesus was born in a stable of humble beginnings for a purpose. And that purpose was to redeem all of their sins. And then they adored. They adored. In Luke 2.20 it says, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they have heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. They went back and they worshipped. They went back and they started doing what they were doing, but they did it in a different way. They went back as shepherds. But as they went back to the fields, they said that they went back praising and communicating what God has done. If I would apply that analogy to our lives... Once we experience Christ, once we have Christ within our life, once we have witnessed what Jesus has done for us, we will go back to our jobs. We're not going to be supernaturally transplanted doing something else. God does great things where we are, just like the shepherds, though. They went back to their job, but they went back different. When we experience Christ as our Savior, when we accept that redemptive plan that God has given to us, and we go back into the workforce, we go back into our homes, we must be able to proclaim the message of Jesus in our hearts first, and then in the lives of others. So often, we experience Jesus, but it doesn't change us. So we go back, and it doesn't do anything. We go back in a negative sight. We look negatively to people instead of looking at what Janet just saying. Here is love. Love is being born. Forgiveness is being offered. Salvation is given. We have to see Christ differently. We have to see others differently because others is the all that the angels were proclaiming about. They need what you have experienced. And if they do not see Jesus in you and in your life, they will never accept Jesus as their Lord. We are the shepherds. We have to go. We have to experience. And once we experience God, once we experience the plan, God has called us, just like he told the shepherds, to go and tell. Go and share. Go and make an impact within the world. So if that is the case, are we or can we be like the shepherds? Let me give you the application. First of all, 
We need to be attentive to what God has called us to do. We have to be attentive to what God has called us to do. Every one of us, if we are a blood-bought saint of Christ, we have a calling upon our life. We have a purpose in our life. It is one of the deepest heartfelt needs implanted by God within us is to say there's a purpose for my life. That purpose, once we find out what that purpose is, once we know that God has put within me a desire, an honor a desire from God to fulfill a plan of God, we have to be attentive. We cannot put God's purpose that he put into our hearts on coast mode. We have to be attentive. Every day, the Bible says we must self-sacrifice. Every day we have to die to ourselves. Every day we have to open up our hearts towards God and says, God, I need you to give within me a desire to be focused on what you have called me to do. And there's going to be divine appointments every day within my life. I need you to open my eyes. I need you to give me the words to say, the actions to perform in order for me to fulfill the purpose within my life. God has called us to have a purpose. And then be awed by God's message. Be awed by God's message. They were terrified in one version. They were very fearful in another version. They were, they were in awe. God. Son. The angel of the Lord. The heavenly hosted choir impacted their life. It is something, once we experience true conversion once we see Jesus as he truly is, once we've experienced forgiveness, once we've experienced transformation, once we've been broken, once we realize that I was blind, but now I see. Once we realize that I had no hope, but now I have hope. Once we realize I was in my sin, but now I'm sinless. Once we realized that if I'd have died, I'd have gone to hell. But now I realize when I die, I go to heaven. We should be in awe. There's nothing that we should not do for the cause of Christ. It's awe. It is something deep within our soul and deep within our heart that we should look at Jesus differently. We should honor him with our lips and honor him with our hands. We should do everything we possibly could do to be in awe of the power of God and the transforming power that he has given to us to have Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Christians, we should be in awe. Just as the shepherds were in awe, we should be in awe. Not on Christmas morning, but every day of our life because of Christmas morning. It is the event that started, catapulted. It was the catalyst to start the redemptive plan. And he called us, just like the shepherds, to be in awe of that and accept the gift of good news. Just like the shepherds, accept it. Every one of us, every one of us, has to accept what Jesus Christ has given to us. It's not good enough to go to church. It's not good enough to be born into a Christian home. Each and every one of us must first accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. It's not good enough that your parents were deacons. It's not good enough that you're a member of a church. Christianity has nothing to do with the name of the church over the door. It has everything to do with Jesus Christ that's within the door. And once we've accepted Jesus Christ personally and accepted him as our Lord and Savior, then we can act upon what God has called us to do. Accept the gift of the good news of Jesus Christ. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. You will not be able to experience the gift of Christmas until you first accept that gift of Christmas and accept that gift that Jesus Christ is your Lord. He did die on the cross for your sins. He did accept you and he has forgiven you. And all we have to do is accept that gift and apply that gift and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have to accept the gift of the good news. And then act on what you know to be true. What does that mean? Act upon what you know to be true. You know that you're a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. 
I know that's kind of surprising to some of you. But a sinner. A dirty, rotten, no good sinner that Jesus loves. He looks at me and he loves me. He looks at me and he says, all I see is my son. You've accepted Jesus. So I don't look at you in a, in a negative light. I don't look at you as somebody that is full of sin. Because once you've accepted me as your Lord, when my father looks at you, he sees nothing but sinless perfection because you are a saint of God. We must act upon that. We must accept that we are not caught in our sins. We do not have to live in our sins because we know what to be true because the word of God has given it to us that if we accept Jesus as our Lord, the word as our guide, we can do what it has called us to do. We cannot be blinded to the fact that we can and we should follow what God has called us to do. How do we do that? By looking at the word of God, knowing it to be true, knowing what the Bible says, and at all costs, get away from what is wrong. Here's what it says. Act on what you know to be true. Let me give you a little bibliology a little bit. The Bible is absolute truth. Absolute truth. The word of God is without error. Which means, if the word of God says it, it's inspired by God through men to write down through the Holy Spirit the Word of God. That means Genesis 1-1 is true and John 1-1 is true. John 3-16 is true and John 3-36 is true. Why? It's because it's inspired by God. So if we take the Word of God as absolute truth, we can take it and know that we can live by it and not worry about it, but know that God will honor us through it. And if we do that, we will know to live by truth. It may be uncomfortable. It may be hard. We may have to stop some stupid things that we're doing. But you know what? To honor God, to be in awe of what he has done, to accept the gift of salvation which he has offered, the word of God is what gives me peace and comfort in the midst of my life so we can have eternal life. So what do we do? I believe one of the greatest things that we can do is what we did this morning before uh, we walked in the door, the band and the praise team was preparing their hearts and preparing a worship service. I, play, I believe how we show Jesus that we love him and we respect what he has done, we have given us, given him our hearts is we adore Emmanuel 24-7. That means we just live in a way to honor and respect and on occasion worship our Lord. It doesn't mean that we walk around 24-7 with our hands in the air singing praise songs and letting everybody know that I'm a Christian because I'm singing about Jesus every 24-7. No, it means our life must be a direct representation of what Jesus has done for us. God, Son, Jesus, came to this earth as a baby. He lived 33 years, and he died for your sins. You have no ability to go to heaven on your own. You can't. You can't get to God on your own. The only way that you have access to God is through Jesus. The only way. And when you die, you gain an eternal life in heaven with God because of Jesus. You can have joy in the midst of the storm because of Jesus. It's all about Jesus. The Bible says there's no other name that we should worship other than Jesus. It's the greatest name that's ever given to a child is Jesus. The name 
Jesus causes anger and it also causes worship. It's all about the heart. So when we worship Jesus, we should be in awe of him. We should adore him and we should live for him 24-7. Every day of our life, we should honor and love Jesus because he is the reason for the celebration on December 25th. It is about Jesus. It is the greatest time of the year that we can communicate about Jesus because everyone is going to celebrate Christmas somehow. But you, we have the reason to communicate the truth that the word of God has given to us that Jesus started the redemptive plan in the manger and he fulfilled it in the tomb when he conquered death, hell, and the grave and he ascended back up to God. The process was complete. You and me, we are the benefactor of what Jesus did. I say praise God. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you for your love to us. And Lord, we thank you for the story that you've given to us in the word of God about what truth is and how you called common men that was doing a common job to do an amazing thing. To be the ones that you proclaim the message of Jesus to. Now, Lord, allow us, allow our hearts to be stirred. Allow us to honor you in our life. As the shepherds did, you've called us to proclaim that message. Let us never forget what it did. The message of Jesus, born in Bethlehem for you and for me. Thank you. Thank you for giving that to us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Pastor Al.